Hi, this is Brian with The Balanced Dog, and today I'm out here with Appa. I'm not sure if you can see him or not. Oh, here he comes. He's a, a beautiful, uh, big old meathead, as we like to call him, uh, pit bull. He about, he's about a year and a half, and uh, he's unneutered, and he came in uh, because he was, I guess some could claim it, reactive towards dogs but he is basically really excited around dogs. And part of that, because he is unneutered, now we have that, that hormone kind of going through the system and that's gonna make it even more challenging for him to kind of remain calm around dogs or to teach him to be calm around dogs, right? So the owners had worked with somebody and they, they kind of um, cut ties there after a while and the reason was that they were taking the dog into a situation where it jacked his arousal or his excitement up to you know a pretty high level and then they were trying to uh, correct him out of that and uh, they were probably on they were on a remote collar and i believe they said they were around 45 out of 100 on the level now in that situation, that's totally inappropriate. Now, 45 is not a bad level depending on the dog that you're working on and, and what you're working the dog through. So 45 out in the field, when a dog's in a high prey-driven mode, and especially if he's highly prey-driven, 45 is probably not that high of a number just to get him to come off of scent and stuff for that dog. But let me preface that by saying that I build a lot of the foundation work in this area first or out on the road where we don't have as many scent um, available as much as we do out in the field from the rabbits and the coyotes and the ground squirrels. Needless to say the movement, the running of the ground squirrels and the running of the rabbits. So the, the bottom line is I'm going to work the dog in an environment where I can control the stimulus and I can have the stimulus as low as possible and that's where I'm going to build his foundation on the things that he needs to know really well before I put him in a situation let's say around the dogs right so what what does that mean well I'm going to work on recall that's bringing him away from the stimulus something that is generating not only we have the the, the testosterone that's that we're, we're you know working against but also when he sees that, that dog or those dogs, we have the adrenaline jacking up and we have the cortisol levels jacking up, right? So in order to bring those down and to teach the dog how to be around that stimulus in a healthy way is by redirecting them out of it through a recall or a let's go. That's the initial commands that I start with. And then eventually I'll build in the leave it command, you know, as we go along. And uh, you're very fascinated with that, aren't you? <laughs> See, so I, I'm just sitting here talking, squatting down. I got a big wet kiss. And just that increases his arousal, you know? So he's just a really excited, really soft dog, by the way. And he was being treated as he was a really, he was being treated really firm as he was, if he was a really confident or strong dog, but he's not. You know, he's a, he's a bit of a marshmallow. He's not very confident. Uh, things kind of startle him. And so for me, that's, that's what I have to look at in my approach to any dog, is that where is this arousal, um, overstimulation, excitement, you know, where is this coming from? Is it coming from, in his case, he's unneutered and he likes dogs and he really wants to be with them. My, my, my goal with him is to teach him we can be with them, but we have to be with them at this level, right? So if you're dealing with a dog with, uh, the overstimulation is uh, derived from anxiety, you know, or fear. You know, these are what we would term as the reactive dog. So when they see a dog, uh, they start becoming vocal and um, pulling on a leash and lunging. And that is definitely a, a part of the, the predatory drive behavior because all that, that the chemical downloads that happen in that scenario are the same in a prey driven scenario, whether it's a squirrel, a rabbit, a cat, you know, the ears perk up, the intensity, the focus, the targeting, the fixation, you know, all those things happen with 
with the, the animals, the squirrels, the cats, and the, and the rabbit, but also you see the same triggers when the dog sees a dog. So for me, I look at that as loading in, a, in the prey drive, so I'm going to work that dog just like I would a dog that um, I'm working off horses or squirrels uh, with their prey-driven um, issues, is that I'm going to build recall off of those things. Because when I recall them away from the stimulus, then, then those um, download of those chemicals, the adrenaline and the cortisol start to, to kind of bring, you know, we're bringing it back down, basically. So, I mean, in a nutshell, what I'm doing is, you know, there's a few different terms for it. Um, I'm creating a new habit loop, um, creating a new pattern, or uh, building a new neural pathway. So let's say for him, when he sees dogs, his, his old neural pathway is that he gets excited and he pulls towards them, you know, and then he starts whining and he starts drooling and, you know, so these are all the bad signs that we, we want to um, switch when we start building the new neural pathway, right? So the new neural pathway, the building of the new neural pathway is that I let him go towards the stimulus. Now this is after I've built a lot of foundation on the remote caller. So I'm saying his recall lets go. And then again, I start building, leave it in there. Once I see the behavior is tamped down by doing the let's go or by doing the recall, right? So the, the point is, is that as myself, as a trainer, I'm looking at, I need to change this dog's habit loop or I need to change this dog's neural pathway. So that old neural pathway will always kind of be hanging out there on the side. But what we're trying to do is, is weaken that one so the dog actually chooses to go to the new one that we're building. Now, it's important to understand you can't build new neural pathways solely through punishment. So if I was to take him and, and put him around the dogs and, and his high level of excitement goes up and I keep him in that scenario and I just keep trying to, to pop him on a high level on the e-collar as a no or, or a leave it command when he's on, he's pretty much in the behavior I can I can create a lot of problems there there could be a lot of fallout or a lot of side effects from that uh, some of those can be he's a soft dog so I don't think he would redirect on me but you know that's questionable um, or I can cause him to shut down or I can cause him to go into flight and leave the situation, you know? And so shutting down is like an avoidance, um, wanting to run away from the situation because of the, the uh, intense pressure from the e-caller uh, that he may not completely understand. Hey, Appa. And, uh, you know, so he might, he might try to escape that pressure in a bad way. I want them to, when they feel that pressure, I want them to know that coming back to me is a safe spot. Right, so this is what I've been doing with him. He just kind of came back in for a couple of days of boarding. And so, you know, I've been taking him out with my dogs who've been off leash and I have him on a long line. And so I'm really putting in the practice those things that he knows really well. When he starts to get overly excited and goes towards the dogs too fast, I'm gonna recall him away from it or I can tell him, let's go. Now, as I go through the walk and I see his, his uh, arousal or his, his excitement level start to diminish, and he's, and he's pretty good with the dogs and he's kind of trekking along with them. But once in a while, he'll get that look where it's like, hey, I want to go see that guy. You know, at that point, I can just use a leave it because at, at that time, the e-collar level is going to be much, much lower because I've drained that, that intent either through a direction change like a, a recall or like a let's go command to move him. You know, both of those have moved him out of the situation. So as he comes out of that, he feels better because we're reducing all those those chemical downloads for that moment. And then when he goes back in too excited, they start to ramp up and then I bring them out and they ramp back down. That's going to give that dog a, a better understanding of when he starts to feel overstimulated. And, and by showing him what we want him to do when he feels that way, they start to move themselves out of the situation. So they kind of go into this sort of avoidance or a little bit of, you know, I wouldn't say it flight, but they, they do kind of move around the dogs. They circumvent around them differently. So that's an avoidance that's created through direction, right? There's a big difference of creating avoidance through direction and where the dog feels better coming away from the situation versus keeping them in the situation 
and trying to hammer them through it, you know, to change the behavior. You, you can't change or you can't build a new neural pathway if you're solely going after it through negative uh, punishment, you know. And so that, that just means, you know, high e-collar levels, high corrections on, on a pinch while the dog's in that scenario. He's not going to learn a whole lot and there's a good chance he's not going to retain a whole lot. And if you're able to achieve that, then in order to maintain that, if that is if that is achieved through a great amount of force it'll have to be maintained with the same amount of force most of the time a lot of the times so clients probably aren't going to want to keep maintaining that behavior through that much force or pressure right so he works you know his levels are kind of they fluctuate but when he's out with the dogs and he's really excited now, we've gotten him down to, he's in the 20s out of 100. Um, I'll, I'll bring him out and, and work him around my dogs here. I'm going to keep him on a long line just because he likes to go and play with Edie. And, and she's getting a bit older and her back ends. She's not as agile as she used to be, but she still has some moves. So what I'll do is work him around my dogs out in this scenario on a long line. And just, again, using that direction to bring him away from the dogs when I see that he's starting that excitement or that arousal starting to creep in. And by bringing him out of that situation, I haven't punished him. I haven't used a high level of punishment. What I've used is an appropriate level at that time for that dog to guide him out of the situation. And when you do that, there is that release. It's almost like you opened up this valve to kind of release that that tension or that um, intensity uh, of the arousal or the excitement. And so when you do that and you bring them out, there's that big kind of and then the dog can kind of then take that in, analyze it, and then process it, and then it stores. And that's, and that's a part of building that new neural pathway. So we have to do this over and over and over again to override this, this old pathway that the dog got really good at or the old habit loop that he got really good at. So does it take a little bit longer? Yeah, it takes a little bit more work, but the benefits of doing that from a psychological standpoint for the dog are far more valuable than if you just go in all guns blazing and try and, and correct him out of that behavior, especially when he's in the behavior, because that's where you can start creating the redirects on the handler uh, or the shutting down of the dog where he just goes into what they term as self-helplessness. So. You know, but again, you know, when he's out here with the dogs, I'll, I'll use a leave it command, which he knows, but I'm not going to use it straight out of the gate when he's really stimulated. I'm going to start using it when he's a little bit calmer. So anyways, that's Appa, and I'm going to get my dogs out <laughs> before he knocks me over, and we'll work them out here with the dogs for a little bit. Appa, here. Appa. So this is what I'm, I'm you can see just how wound up he is, but the dogs are kind of avoiding him because he is so wound up. Uh, but we'll see how he does when we, we kind of bring him down. Let's go. So again, I'm just going to work him through the situation. Let's go. Appa, Appa, good boy, Appa, good, let's go. So and the more I get him calmed down and the more he's, he's not so fixated on him, let's go, let's go. There's a little growl <laughs> from the little one, you know, there we go. Let's go. And right there, when he starts ramping up and putting his paw on her back, you know, the next thing's going to be he's going to mount her. You know, but she invited him into play. Let's go. So I'm going to bring him out. I'm not, let him gonna, not going to let him ramp up too high. Now here comes Edie. See, he always wants to kind of mount her. Let's go. 
And I'm going to bring them out of it again. And if she keeps following them, that's fine. Let's go. I'm just going to keep, you know, navigating them through all of this. Now, if I was using more of a punitive level, you know, let's go. Let's go. So I'm still having to use a little leash pressure here. But if I was using really high punitive levels and correcting that behavior, I could definitely be suppressing uh, either a, a drive or I can be suppressing another behavior, which I don't want. I want him, you know, he's obviously social. And I, and I just want to nurture that. I want to build that, that social um, time out here with the dogs. But just show them how to be more social so the dogs are actually will enjoy them a little bit more. <laughs> so at any time, I can just bring them out of this. Let's go. Right? And by bringing them out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring those levels back down again. Let's go. Let's go. So it's almost like playing uh, with a toy, like retrieving. The way I do it is I start them on the place, they're calm, I send the toy, they run out and get it, they get back on the place, and they come back down again. So this is very similar in that, let's go. Now I, I can start using, because I brought that behavior down, but this is a very similar exercise in what I was talking about with retrieving, is that I'm allowing that arousal or that excitement build a little bit, and then I'm bringing them out of it. Right, so that he can he can feel the shift. He can feel the difference between when he's becoming let's go uh, over aroused and kind of going oh okay I've had enough I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break. That's what you want to start to see where the dog starts going okay that's enough you know, and some dogs just don't have that off switch. Let's go, and that's what we're trying to teach them you know. Up up. At a boy. So again, he's uh, on level 24, and I'm not seeing any upper, upper. You know, I'm not seeing any head kicks. I'm not getting any yelping from the collar being too high. Um, you're not seeing any sort of, of this sort of sh sim somewhat shutting down behavior. Uh, all I'm seeing is a, is a dog that's happy. He wants to play, and some dogs are engaging him to play, and now they're kind of, I think over them you know for the most part but let's go play is not the end all be all of being social just hanging out smelling and following each other and uh, there we go is also being social let's go oh boy and those are two females right there so you know it definitely is going to have more draw to them Let's go. Let's go. So I'm using the long line still. You can see I'm putting pressure on it because I don't want to increase the collar level. I, I like the level that it's at. I like his demeanor with that level. So instead of going up higher on it, what I'm going to do is just use the long line. And the more I do this, uh, eventually I'll be able to d dump the long line altogether. Let's go. Hey, let's go. See, now that's starting to build because she's starting to get a little bit irritated with it, even though she's following him, but I have to put the brakes on for a little bit. So everybody, there we go. There we go. Leave it. Good. So there's a little leave it command. So you can understand now, let's go. So I'm going to use the leave it, but you notice that when I did tap leave it, he actually came towards me, and that's because I built let's go and recall first. So, anyways, I hope that helps with working with uh, high arousal or overexcited dogs or reactive dogs. They're all very much similar in how they're being handled. Let's go. Um, which is you're, you're basically you're building a new neural pathway for the old behavior or you're creating a different uh, pattern. Hey, pattern loop. Let's go. All right, so I hope that helps. And uh, this is Appa, the big handsome boy. And thank you everybody for your help. Have a good one, we'll see you soon. Let's go.